So, welcome to the lecture on automatic control system. In this lecture, we will discuss about block diagrams. So, in previous lecture, we saw that in the design process of a control system, when we follow the frequency approach that is to rep represent a system through transfer functions, we use the block diagrams to represent the system or the individual components. Because a system is made of components and each component can be represented through block diagrams. And therefore, a block diagram is made as a input, output and transfer function. So, we can represent this block diagram as So, this is the block, this is input, this is output and this is transfer function. And so, this is we call the block diagram. So, let us say here is some input R s, this is the transfer function G s and this is the output C s. So, s is here the complex frequency domain or Laplace coefficient s is the Laplace variable s is a it is a complex variable. We will discuss more in the next lecture about this Laplace uh, variable and Laplace transform and transfer function. But here we will discuss more about block diagrams and we should understand that an input can be a function of time, but it can be converted to S domain using the Laplace transform and the output can also be a function of time and that could be also converted into the S domain using the Laplace transform. And G s is a transfer function and that is function of S. So, this, this transfer function is the property of a system or a subsystem. So, here we will in this lecture, we will understand some operations of the on the block diagram means if the block diagrams, because we know that in the design process, we reduce to a single block diagram for a components block diagram. So, how to reduce to a single block diagram if we have a components block diagram and therefore, there are certain operations that we should know and we must know. These things will be discussed. So, a block diagram has some input transfer function and output. So, here we can write C s equal to R s into G s. So, here is output is if we multiply input with transfer function of the block diagram, this is the output. Now, we understand the summing junction because we saw that summing jun junction, summing junction We saw that summing junction there are several inputs, several signals comes and they are algebraic operation is going on. Either this 
signals are added or subtracted. So what is the property of summing junction? So let us say we represent summing junction like a circle and a cross and there is suppose there is one signal R 1 S coming and this is plus sign. So this is going to be added then there is another signal R 2 S and this has also plus sign. Then there is some other signal R 3 S and it has minus sign. So, it is going to be subtracted. So, subtraction of the R 3 and addition of the these. So, what will be the output of this summing junction? What output will pass from this summing junction if these three signals are coming at this point? So, this R 1 C S will be equal to R 1 S plus R 2 S and minus R 3 S. So, we understand the operation of a summing junction and so when there are multiple signals entering at this we should know that what will be the output going on because usually summing junctions are used before the controller. So, the controller will get this part C s that is has this relationship with the input signals. Now, there, there is another operation that is peak off point. So, here is peak off point. So, peak off point there could be one signal coming and it might be entering into multiple signals. So, one signal is going to be divided into multiple signals and so this R s will be the same here. This is also R s, this is R s and this is R s. So, whenever we have some another block, in that block the input will be the same R s. The signal from the peak off point is the same how many branches it is going to be divided. So, these are a few points. Now, we will discuss some more familiar parts they are the if the blocks are in series and the blocks are in parallel. So, the blocks in series are called the casket form and blocks in parallel are called the parallel form. So, first we will discuss the casket form. So, let us discuss the casket form. or series form. So, let us say if we have some input R s, there are blocks here and there is certain output C s and this block has a transfer function G 1 s, this has G 2 s and this has G 3 s. Now, we want to know if there are three blocks in series, what will be the C s? Because we can, we want to represent this system into one block that is R s and C s. So, what will be the equivalent transfer function? So, that we can 
replace these three blocks to by one block. We can reduce these blocks to a single block. Now, how we will know? So, let us assume that if there is input, there is a system transfer function, there will be some output and that output will be input to this system and the output from this system will be input to the third system. And let us say this output is x 1 s and this output is x 2 s. So, we apply this rule that if we have input R s transfer function G s. So, output C s can be expressed at R s into G s. So, here x 1 s can be written as R s into G 1 s and x 2 s can be written as x 1 s because input is x 1 s into G 2 s. G 2 s and C s can be written as x 2 s into G 3 s. Now, here C s equal to x 2 s into G 3 s and x 2 s each x 1 s into G 2 s into G 3 s and x 1 s equal to R s into let us say this is G s R s into G 1 s into G 2 s into G 3 s. So, you see what we are doing. So, here C s is equal to R s into G s. So, x 2 s we can write x 1 s into G 2 s. Now, x 1 s we can write R s into G 1 s from these equations. And so, finally, we are going to get R s into G 1 s into G 2 s into G 3 s. Now, if we, so this is equation 1 here C s equal to R s into G s and this is equation 2. C s equal to R s into G 1 s G 2 s into G 3 s. Now, if we compare the two equation 1 and 2, we can see that G s equal to G 1 s into G 2 s into G 3 s. So, means we can replace these three blocks by one block and this blocks transfer function will be multiplied multiplication of the individual blocks functions. So, here a general conclusion we can draw is that if the blocks are in series, we can replace them through a single block and the transfer function of that single block will be the multipli multiplication of the individual blocks. So, that is the equivalent transfer function. Here, G s is the equivalent transfer functions. Now, we come to the parallel form that is the second form parallel form. So, now parallel form let us have uh, input R s and there is a peak off point
So, suppose we have these R s and there is the three blocks in parallel and the blocks are going to be added here at the sum junction, summation junction and we are going to get the output from th these three blocks. So, we want to know that if we want to replace this block with a single block and that has a transfer function g s and this is c s and this is r s. So, what will be g s as a function of g 1 s, g 2 s and g 3 s. Now, again we will apply the simple principle this one that we applied in the case of cascade form. So, you know that this is a pick off point. So, a pick off point here input is r s. So, each of these branches will have the same input r s. So, means here is r s input, here is r s input, here is r s input and so here will be some output. Let us say x 1 s, x 2 s, x 3 s. Now, we know that x 1 s equal to r s into g 1 s because output is equal to input into the transfer function. Here x 2 s equal to r s into g 2 s and x 3 s equal to r s into g 3 s. Now, here c s there, there is all plus. So, summing junctions. So, c s equal to summation of the three outputs. So, summation of the three outputs we have x 1 s plus x 2 s plus x 3 s. So, we have r s into g 1 s plus r s into g 2 s plus r s into g 3 s. Now, we can take r s outside and we can have g 1 s plus g 2 s plus g 3 s. So, we can see here here C s equal to R s into G s and we compare this equation with the, this equation. So, we get that G s equal to G 1 s plus G 2 s plus G 3 s. So, we can see that in this case when we have three parallel in parallel block diagrams and we are going to add these three block diagrams and then we want the output of the these block diagrams. It is the summation of the three block uh, transfer function of the three block diagrams. So, the equivalent transfer function is summation of the individual block diagram. Now, remember that if in spite of plus here is minus, 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 there will be minus, minus and minus. Any of the, if one is here plus, then there will be plus. If minus, this will be minus. Now, another most important form that we will discuss is the feedback form, because we know that feedback form is the most uh, useful form for, for the closed loop system and therefore, in the automatic control system. So, we will discuss the feedback form.
so here this is the error or actuating signal yes the the transfer function of this g1s is the plant and controller plant and controller transfer function this is the feedback transfer function here this is the input now we will try to replace this system as an equivalent system let's say ges that is the equivalent transfer function so now here we can use something like what is es es is error function that is rs minus it is plus summing junction rs minus hs into cs because what will reach here will be cs is this point cs so cs into hs will reach here so cs into hs so this is equation number 1 now what is cs so cs equal to es because this is the input to this block so es into gs so this is equation number 2 now we can replace this es to from this equation so es can be written as cs by gs so cs by gs equal to rs minus cs into hs so from here we take these terms we separate because we want this so we have to separate cs terms and rs terms so cs by gs plus cs hs equal to rs we can take out cs here so cs equal to 1 by gs plus hs equal to rs so this is 1 plus gs hs 1 plus gs hs by gs rs so this is cs so now we can write that cs equal to rs into so here cs into this term equal to rs so cs equal to rs into gs upon 1 plus gs hs so if we compare this with here because here cs equal to rs into ges this equation for this transfer function so we can see ges is this part so ges equal to gs upon 1 plus gs hs so this is the equivalent transfer function of the feedback closed loop system so you can see that this system we can represent to a equivalent single block system having the transfer function gs upon 1 plus gs hs now if here we have taken this minus if it is plus then there will be a minus sign here 
सो जी एस इक्वल टू जी एस अपान वन माइनस जी एस एच एस इफ स्पाइट ऑफ माइनस साइन हियर समिंग जंक्शन इट इज प्लस साइन दिस ट्रांसफर फंक्शन वी विल गेट सो नाउ वी कैन डिस्कस सम प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ब्लॉक डाइग्राम सो वट वी सी फ्रॉम दिस दैट इट इज इजियर टू मेक अ ब्लॉक डाइग्राम फॉर अ फिजिकल सिस्टम एंड वी कैन इवेलुएट द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ ईच कंपोनेंट टू ओवरऑल परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द सिस्टम एंड बाई एग्जामिनिंग द ब्लॉक डाइग्राम वी कैन एग्जामिन द पैरामीटर्स ऑफ दैट सिस्टम बिकॉज ब्लॉक डाइग्राम कंसिस्ट द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन दैट कंसिस्ट द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द सिस्टम once we are made we have made the block diagram it is if i you i give you a block diagram it is a difficult to tell that what actually the physical systems looks like because physical system is transferred to the block diagram as a parameter consisting the parameters of the system it could be a, a similar block diagram can be achieved for a mechanical system or electrical system or some other system so from just seeing the block diagram we can't tell that what actually is the physical system so block diagram takes the property of a system where the physical uh, uh, physical uh, features are not important but what is important is the properties of the system that govern the performance of that system the last point is that we can make several block diagrams for uh, the same system it depends on that how much detail we are going to include in that block diagram whether we are going to include some some parameters or we are going to leave that parameter whether we are going to consider that system as a first order or second order so this will change the block diagram the transfer function so therefore it is possible to make several block diagrams for the same system depending on our consideration of the characteristics of the system so here uh, we stop and uh, i thank you for your attention and let's see in the next lecture thanks